everyone! Welcome to another week of Clip Studio Paint Tutorial! I am super proud of you guys for guessing the topic for today, because today we are talking about what Clip Studio Paint was originally designed for, and that is... Manga! For those who don't know, the term manga is Japanese for comic book. And this is why Clip Studio Paint was originally called Manga Studio. They fully unified the name to Clip Studio Paint in 2016. But Clip Studio Paint continues to have the most powerful features created for comic book use. So today, I will be shedding some light on why Clip Studio Paint is the most used software in Japan. Most manga have these three things in common. Grits, speech bubble, and tones. Tones and Clip Studio Paint in particular is such a cool feature that even if you don't do comic book work, you will find it really useful. This is especially exciting for me given the fact that I have no idea how to do manga. The only time I've done manga was when I was 17 and too edgy for my own good. This was heavily inspired by Battle Angel Alita, which is one of my favorite series growing up. I cannot wait to see what kind of train wreck we're going to create today during the tutorial. No plan is the best plan. But we do kind of have to have a plot. So how about the super stale format of good versus evil, namely Joseph versus Captopus? Starting a comic book page is super simple in Clip Studio Paint. You simply go into File, New, change it to the comic book tab, and all the presets are in there for you. From here, you can decide how much bleed you will want for your printer, how much resolution you want, and the base expression color. If your comic book is in monotone, then you can leave it as is. But if you want your comic book to be in color, simply change your expression color to color. But today we are going to keep it simple and just use monotone. If you already have an idea of how your grids are going to look like, you can use the template to speed things up. There are a lot of presets to choose from. But today we're not doing that because, like I said, we have no idea what we're doing. The features such as fanzine, multiple pages, and cover page are exclusive to Clip Studio Paint EX. So we're going to focus on single page for Clip Studio Paint Pro users. Once you have all of your settings in place, simply hit OK. Clip Studio Paint will auto-create a page that is convenient for printing. It will include a bleed area, which will be cut off by the printer, the rest of the page, as well as an indication of safe area where most of your important information should be in. The next step is to look for frame border. This tool creates the outline of your working area and is the first step to making frames. For simplicity, we're going to use the rectangle frame. You can drag it across the safe area, and it's going to automatically create folders on the side for you. And from here, when you use the cut frame border, you will be able to create frames in no time. And from the layer panel, you can see that every frame that you created, it generated a folder for you. Every folder comes with a background, a raster layer, and a mask. The mask is in place so that whatever you draw, it's not going to go out of that border. And you can easily toggle frame simply by selecting the layer within that frame. The same concept applies to polyline frame and frame border pan. It's just that your working area is going to be a different shape. Like if for whatever reason you will want your border frame to be like a shape of a bear, you can do that too. Like bear within the bear. Something worth mentioning here is how your folders are set up. If you know that you're going to have a vector layer in every folder, you can simply start a vector layer in your initial frame folder. And from this point on, whenever you create a frame folder, it's going to automatically add another vector layer for that folder. Adjusting these frames is also super easy. Use the object tool and make sure you have the mask selected. And now you can use these dots to change the way your frame looks. Drag the big dot in the corner to scale the entire thing. Drag the small one in the corner to change the corner. Drag the big one on the side to expand the side or to shrink it. The top one is used to rotate and click on the triangle to snap to border. The frame folders are essentially grouped and mask layers. All features such as the 3D model, rulers, painting brushes, and materials are all fully available for you to use. It simply streamlines the framing process for easy adjustment. Wow, this is actually going a lot better than I expected. But I feel like the last panel is lacking in a bit of a dramatic effect. It's a showdown between Joseph and Cactopus, so I wanted it to be speedy. And that's where this hidden gem comes in. Go into your figure tool and choose saturated line. These tools can help you create speed lines really quickly. There are a lot of different presets to try out, but you can always play with the attributes to have different effects. But I think the dark saturated is pretty intense, so we're just gonna go with that. 
And the best thing about these features is that you can always adjust them after you've placed them. For example, I now want the bottom frame to fill to the edge. I will use the object tool on the mask, click on the triangle for them to fill the entire page. But there are some areas of the effect line that isn't filled to the edge. So continue using the object tool, I just go back to the effect line layer. And from here, you can readjust the length or the thickness or whatever that makes you happy. And now we're going to add some dialogue. Oh no, what do I even say? Don't matter, we're going to go to the balloon tool. And from here, you can automatically create a speech bubble just by dragging. Another tip is that if you want the balloons to go beyond the mask, all you have to do is once you place it, move the layer to above. And when you have the same layer selected, your bubble will merge. Once you have the main balloon down, select the balloon tail and simply drag it across. Now that's a little bit too small, so we're going to increase the width of tail. Much better. There is also thought balloon tail for your convenience. If you want to freehand a balloon bubble, you can always use the balloon pen and draw it out. And use the polyline instead of straight line in your balloon tail to direct it. Double click to settle. I can just see all the comic book artists face palming right now. And once you have the thought bubble, it's time to play some text. After selecting the text tool, click on the wrench icon in your tool property panel. Go under text and select wrap text at frame. Once you have that checked, make sure you have the font that you want selected. I honestly don't know what we're going to use, but how about we just stick to whatever that was before. And now whatever you type is actually going to stay inside the speech bubble. What's really cool is that you can adjust the shape of your speech bubble at any time. Before we move on, there's one more setting in the object menu that I would like to show you. Let's say that after I finish everything, I suddenly have a change of heart in the bottom frame, and I want it to go across the entire page. First of all, you'll want to make sure the frame that you want to run across the entire page to be on the very bottom of the layer orientation. This means that the rest of your frames are going to be on top of it. But right now, when I try to expand, this frame, it's going to shrink the second frame. But I don't want that. I want to maintain the size of the second frame. So instead, you'll want to change keep gutters aligned from horizontal and adjacent to none. And now when you try to move the border frame, the rest of it is not going to change with it. And you can adjust the shape of your frame however you see fit. And by checking off snap to other frame borders, I can adjust the gutter of every frame more intricately. Lastly, if you want to add some texture to your border frame, you can increase the brush size and click on the brush shape drop down menu and change it to the shape you want. Let's give it heart because we have a pretty sensitive octopus here. His feelings are pretty delicate. I hope so far it has been easy to understand because now we're just getting to the fun part, the half tone. Manga is generally printed in only black ink. The gray area that you see is made of small black dots or other patterns. Traditional tone paper can be very expensive. So Clip Studio Paint is like, nah, let's not do that. There are two super easy way to create half tones in Clip Studio Paint. Let's say I want to create a gradient in the background. So I select the soft airbrush to create the gradient. But how come even with the hardness turned all the way down, I'm getting the hard edges? Remember that when we initially set up the page, we chose monochrome for the page. Monochrome allows the page to be printed in only black. So what do we do if we want a soft gradient? Let's start a new layer so it's easy to see. Now click on the Layer Property tab. If you cannot see this tab, go into Window and Layer Property. And in here, you want to click on Tone and change the expression color to gray. And now, you're painting in gradient. But what this really is are dots. And the size of these dots give you the illusion of grays. There are also so many different type of dots. If you click on the drop-down menu, you can select what type of shape you want. Let's say, I don't want circle, I want lines or cross lines. You can also expand the dot settings and change the angle to give yourself a slightly different texture. I will proceed to do the same for the octopus, I mean cactopus, whatever. By the way, the lasso fill in the figure tool is incredible. You just draw any shape using your lasso, and then once you release it, it's going to automatically fill the area. The second part involves going into your material. <laughs> I forgot I put it there involves going into your material palette. If you can't find this, go into window material. 
my not so sincere apology. So we go into monochrome and you will see a ton of different assets in here. Let's pick this one for example and drag it to where you want the center to be. If I don't want the pattern to repeat and I want the gradient to invert, I will have the operation object selected and go into the tool property panel. Choose do not repeat for edge process. Now I'll click on the event settings and hit reverse gradient. Hit OK. I can also use the dot to expand or shrink the circle. The difference between do not repeat and not draw within the edge process is that do not repeat expands the outermost value to beyond the parameter, whereas not draw simply stops at the parameter. Reverse means it'll invert the gradient and repeat means it'll repeat. And you can still use the layer property to change the texture of the tone. Side note, spend some time with the material folders. You can probably find really, really cool patterns that you've been looking for to add flair to your illustrations. You can easily expand or shrink these patterns, flip it to your drawing layer, and change the orientation. You can always find more by going to File, Open Clip Studio, and under Clip Studio Assets. And from here, you can find countless resources from 3D objects to image materials to different body shapes. I found a beautiful pattern the other day when I was live streaming. Look at that. You can also easily change the way it tiles to give you different patterns. You can also create your own pattern by going into Layer, File Object, Convert Layer to File Object. If you choose Drawing Area, then it's only going to go up until where the pixels end. Whereas canvas size is going to give you the whole canvas, even when the rest of it is transparent. But let's say we want drawing area only, and then just hit OK. Pick a place for it to save, and you will now see a file object icon. From here, select the operation object tool, turn off your original layer, and enable tiling. Now it's a pattern. And of course, you can change the orientation of your tiles as well. And remember where you save that file, open that file, and let's say we use the close and fill to quickly fill in some colors, and we save it. It will instantly update in all of the files that use the same file object. Now you can have a pretty colorful pattern. And if I want to use this pattern for my comic book, because why not, then you just hit Ctrl C to copy, go back to your page, Ctrl V to paste, right now it's pretty tiny, so we're going to use the object tool again and increase the scale ratio. But since the original file object has color and we can't have that, so we'll go into layer property and enable tone. And if I only want this area revealed, I'll just create a mask layer. Use the masking layer to reveal only the area you want. Also, I just made the villain wear a floral bear shirt. Last step is to output your page. Clip Studio Paint allows you to resize and export super easily. Go under File, Export. Usually we'll go for JPEG and hit Save. From here, you can resize the page without changing your actual file and decide what you do or do not want included. For comic, you can choose between preferred quality or fast. So what you might want to do if you just want to upload it to the internet is to not have crop mark nor the default border, change all pages to inside of crop mark, and then change the expression color to toning. I'll put it in whatever size that you want, and let's pick fast for rasterize. I'll press OK. And that's the exported JPEG, perfectly cropped. And that is how powerful Clip Studio Paint is when it comes to creating comics. Unfortunately, due to time, I can go into individual attributes to show you what they do. But hopefully that gave you some direction of where to find things and what is available to you. Next week is going to be the last episode of Clip Studio Paint tutorial series. We're saving a major feature in Clip Studio Paint for the finale. And you guys have been so incredibly supportive that we want to give away a copy of Clip Studio Paint EX next week. The EX version allows you to convert 3D object into to line art lets you work on multiple pages in the same view and preview your comic book in 3D. It also has an important feature related to the topic that we will be discussing in the upcoming episode. So be sure to watch the next episode for more details. And that is it for today. Again, I'm the one with Bear. I'll see you next week.